Hey everybody, Cody Menz here, doing today's scavenger hunt. Quick little video here on YouTube. Uh, you can find the uh, basically code above me, uh, also tomorrow's CC in the video description, also in the title, everywhere. I'm also live on Twitch as of you know basically this video coming out tonight here on YouTube. Uh, tomorrow will be uh, Vagara21. He's here on YouTube. Uh, you can just search him in the channel. You know, basically search above. A uh, little bit too long for the URL to pop it in here, uh, but. Uh, basically, he should be releasing it, I believe, around like 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Sometime, you know, in the, e in the evening on his YouTube channel. Anyway, the quick little video here. Um, <laughs> wish I had a little bit more time to do this, but it's been a little hectic day for me. Uh, something like kind of, you know, just different I wanted to do was kind of top 10 tanks, I think, for just say your everyday, just random battle playing solo in tier 10. Uh, no clan war tanks, no reward tanks, because uh, everyone knows they're completely overpowered. That's a completely dis different discussion. But kind of what, what tanks would I feel like most people popping into would give you a, say, an enjoyable battle. Whether you win or at least you can hold your own and, you know, basically do better um, than if you're playing, say, an off meta tank or, you know, something like already where you're completely team dependent, so on and so forth. Feel free to let me know in the video uh, basically comment section how badly I screwed this up and how much you hate me but in any way number 10 leopard one here uh, I feel like this tank ever since they buffed it super mobile it's flexible the guns awesome with the accuracy and the penetration where it's pretty darn good and you know for those that know you know the type of tanks I like don't you know the type of tanks I like it's kind of surprising to see me pick this because typically like I like a little bit of armor to my tanks but I feel like this is good enough to make kind of the top 10 here. Number 9, Russian tank, IS-7. Uh, the IS-7, great all-around armor, black hole armor on the side of the tank, you know, really strong turret armor. The gun's okay, It's that's the main downside of this tank is the gun, the accuracy, and the base penetration. But I feel like it's all-around solid uh, to where it kind of squeaks itself in at number 9. Number 8. We're going with the M48A5. Pretty much, you can't say this tank's the best at anything, but you can't say it's the worst at anything either, which is something I really like about American tanks. And specifically for this topic of playing solo, you know, basically in standard battles at tier 10 with no reward tanks. Also, just for your everyday, like, it's not like you're some super god unicum person or, you know, basically running a bot account. Just generally speaking, I feel like this tank does really well because it's an all-around good tank. Number seven, really strong tank. Some might people, some people might think this should be higher, but the Super Conqueror, another really strong all-around tank, especially like hold down. It's got strong armor if you hide the sides and the lower plate. It's not higher though because of the speed. Your top speed, uh, basically, I feel like gimps you a little bit, a little bit over 34 kilometers an hour. I know you can't see it uh, behind my webcam here, and a very low specific power. I feel like that hurts you, especially uh, playing solo, because uh, if your team's not doing too well, good luck trying to get into a good spot and hold it in this thing. It's not really good if, unless you know you have kind of a solid team to go along alongside of it. All right, number six, back to Russia, Object 268 version four actually the only TD I picked here um, and go figure it's this tank that has a crap ton of frontal armor also has a pretty solid gun and a crap ton of mobility really the main downsides is you know if people spam gold and you know mainly hit your weak spots or if they flank you but I feel like you know for the TDs this one's pretty solid I almost wanted to pick the T124 but the E4 has got some you know pretty pretty big problems that I don't feel like you know makes it a solid pick uh, for this uh, choice but or this uh, specific topic but this tank it's really strong and I like it and I think a lot of people can do well on it as long as you just don't get flanked all right number five scrolling all the way down here uh, the Progetto 65 another medium tank and another kind of lightly armored medium tank as more than a leopard one uh, but not as much as say the m 48 a 5 that was on the list a little bit lower this tank however you know has that auto reloader which is awesome it's really mobile and it gives you a lot of flexibility probably one of the you know harder tanks I feel like to play here um, because if you don't use the auto reloader uh, correctly you don't get the most out of it but I like this tank 
you know, for playing solo in tier 10s because you do have that flexibility of dumping damage all in one, you know, basically burst. We're just using it as a single shot tank and you have that mobility, uh, which is really nice to dart around the map. If your, team's, if your team's doing great, awesome, push with them. If they're not doing great, fall behind, you know, basically just try to support them. Anyway, uh, number four, but number four and three, we have a tie here. Uh, since these tanks are very similar, WZ 1115A and also, drum roll, Optic 277, another Russian tank. Uh, both of these tanks, uh, I pretty much, not to say they're the same because there are some differences, but generally speaking, they play very similar. You know, really uh, good heavy tank gun on a mobile platform, pretty good turret armor, whole armor is iffy, uh, you know, especially against 9s and 10s, but generally speaking, you know, they're nice tanks with good firepower, decent mobility for a heavy, and a sprinkle of armor in there. So I feel like they are very good picks, you know, kind of, you know, three and four here. Number two, this might surprise some people, uh, but if you've been watching me on Twitch uh, playing rank battles, and especially playing rank battles with no reward tanks and doing pretty darn well, the 60 TP. This tank is at number two on my list here. Uh, since it's got really good gun depression, it's got really good armor. Um, outside of hold down, it's a little bit weak at times, but in standard battles, you're not always against just tier 10s, and if people aren't chucking premium left and right, your hull can hold up pretty well, um, like side scraping and stuff at times. And if you're, you know, hold down itself, you're pretty darn hard to damage compared to, say, like an E100 that has that really weak turret. This tank has a strong turret, the gun hits hard. Um, you know, it doesn't have the best gun depression, you know, 8 degrees, it doesn't have like negative 10, but, you know, hits hard, strong armor, mobility isn't the best, however, so if you compare it against the Super Conquerors, I was surprised, because I thought this was a little bit slower, uh, basically, so going off of my stats in the garage here, I know they're covered up again, like this has 35 kilometers an hour forward, 14 backwards, a 12.84 specific power on the 60 TP here. Meanwhile, Super Conqueror, 12.24 specific power, almost one uh, kilometer an hour slower going forward and two backwards. So the 60 TP is actually a little bit faster than the Super Conqueror, just on paper. Last but not least, the another Russian tank, Object 430U. I feel like this tank, um, until they basically you know, balance it and you know nerf it, whatever the hell they're going to do with it, you know, in like 2050 two or something <laughs> uh, I forget what the date they gave us but I feel like this tank it, it's hard not to pick this uh, for just solo tier 10 gameplay just for your generalist like average player and just being consistent it's a medium so it's got pretty good mobility the gun all around is pretty well albeit accuracy isn't the best uh, also penetration could be a little bit of problems if unless you use premium but the armor is awesome. You're basically rolling around in a heavy tank armor-wise. It can side scrape sometimes. Basically, you know, your gun's just a little bit derpy at long ranges, and your gun depression at 5 degrees is a little bit low. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to beat up on this tank, and especially playing solo, you can fill it in at a pinch if your team needs a little bit of, like, armor and, like, kind of a mini heavy uh, and a push. Uh, if your team needs a medium to kind of push with your, you know, mediums, you have that and you bring some armor to the table. And all around, it's, you know, it's, it's not to say it's an easy tank to play because you can screw it up. But it gives you like a decent, like, basically base. The hull and the armor is easy to use. The gun's pretty easy to use. Really, the only downside is the lack of gun depression. So you can't play on hills, but everywhere else, you kind of... You know, can get your fingers in things and do pretty well because uh, the tank is pretty darn good. Albeit, I, I admittedly admit that this tank does need to be balanced a little bit better. But anyway, that's number one on my list. Generally speaking, like even though this is a top ten and I rank them, I feel like all these tanks, you know, and especially other tanks in the right hands, you can do better. You can also do worse depending on you know who the player is and stuff like that or maps. But I kind of pick this based off of like just you know a ton of battles just thinking about like all players and generally speaking playing alone and not getting frustrated when your team gets routed in the first two minutes and you know generally speaking yeah i think that this is a pretty good list but again tell me in the comment section you know how poorly i did how much you hate me and 
Now again, scavenger hunt code is above here. It's also in the title, video description. If you have no idea what the scavenger hunt is, uh, definitely uh, pop onto the World of Tanks NA official Discord server, uh, worldoftanks.com, go into the article section. I'll pop the link in the video description too to the main November scavenger hunt thing. Basically put in codes if you're on the NA server, you can get a lot of free stuff. Um, the credits are back, uh, the credit boosters. From my understanding, from what they said today, um, every code that you put in from here on out and mission that you do, you'll get the credit boosters right then and there. The ones that where they uh, basically weren't working before now, they'll be compensated at some point in the near future, whether it's at the end of the month, before then, after then, you know, but they will be comp compensated. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little video. Have a nice night or day. Hehehe. <laughs>